So yeah, so I would just um, give a brief overview of um, what's in store for the AMAR part. And then I will also, with Chris has already mentioned, um, talk a little bit about the synergistic um, notebook, because I also think it's, uh, it's quite a, a nice one to kind of tie everything together a little bit. Um, so just as a recap, what have you um, been doing during this week? Um, so sorry, the last week. Um, so that was the fully sampled notebook. I mean, it's all very basic. It was to, to kind of explain to you this concept of, of Catatron and um, also a little bit of, of Python programming and so on, but also introduce this the layout of the MR raw data and show you in a very simple example of how we can reconstruct an image. Then we also had this case-based filter notebook. Here, the main learning objective was to see that you can also interact with the raw data. Um, so not um, as Chris showed before, like a, at each iteration of an algorithm, but basically along the reconstruction pipeline. So we use Cachetron to read in the data. Um, then we got our raw case-based data. We can modify it, we can filter it, and then we can pass it on to Cachetron and do a reconstruction. And the last one, and this is then also where I will uh, go into a little bit more detail was the coil combination. So this introduced the concept that in MRI, we don't just have one raw data set, but we have multiple raw data sets and they are acquired with different coil elements of a um, general receiver coil. And in this notebook, you basically looked at um, what does the data look like and how can you um, combine that? So um, for this week, the second week, we now move on to the iterative reconstruction. So it's all about undersampled reconstructions and uh, how can we get uh, a good image quality out of that. So there are these three notebooks, the undersampled, the advanced recon, the create undersampled case space, which is more like to show you some, some more tools, which we actually then need also in the third week um, when we do some synergistic image reconstruction. So coming back to this call combination notebook, um, there I mentioned this before, right? So if the MRI scanner, but uh, we use this to create our signal basically and then code it spatially, but then we use this um, additional receiver coils in order to receive our signal. Um, the main reason why this was developed is in order to improve SNR. So here's an example of a, a, a big coil which covers everything which we want to image. Um, and then you can also see that everything which is kind of visible by this coil um, can pr also produce noise. And that's not very good if you only want to acquire a small slice here, um, then we don't want to have the entire abdomen here, for example, to produce noise. And this is kind of where the idea of this um, uh, receiver array started. So the idea was if I have a smaller coil, then of course also only a smaller volume contributes to this, to this data. Um, sorry, to the noise level here. But of course, this does create really a, a a good image, so I need multiple of these ones to cover everything I actually want to image. And this really improved the SNR of, of, of MRI, um, but quite quickly people realized that this also can be um, very interesting for image reconstruction. So here in the notebook, um, we looked at these different coil images, so an example for a brain image with like four different receiver coils, each of them creates a case space. Each case space here reconstructed shows a different part of the image because this basically is just sensitive to a certain part of the brain. And then here in this notebook, we looked at how do we need to combine those. So we saw that we can calculate this um, core sensitivity maps, which are shown here. So this gives a spatial so that the information about where this coil actually is sensitive to. And based on that, we then can do so-called a weighted combination, uh, where we weight the, the images with the um, complex conjugate of the coils, sum them up and then normalize those. Um, now, um, the, um, if, we, if we put it kind of back to, to the formula for, for MRI, then um, we can also say, well, we have a, our acquired case space. This is this part here, the Y is our image. Um, then we have some Fourier encoding is done by our gradient coils. So that's the Fourier transform. And then we have this multiplication with the core sensitivity maps. Um, and so the first thing we see here, which was also in the notebook is right. So we have got um, not just one case space, but multiple case space, but just one image, right? So we have one object, which we want to um, reconstruct, but we have multiple kind of sets of measurements from this object. They all acquired at the same case space position because this encoding doesn't change for the different coils, but they all weighted slightly differently. Um, the question is, well, how can we best make use of this information? Um, the second thing we have to keep in mind is that this is a Fourier transform. So um, we have a multiplication here in image space, 
Um, and um, if you remember your uh, math courses, then a multiplication image space is nothing else as a convolution in a Fourier space. So in this case, it's a conv convolution with the Fourier transform of the coil maps in our K space. And based on, on, on these things, um, basically uh, one um, reconstruction approach was um, developed, which is called Grappa. It all falls under this kind of umbrella term of parallel imaging, where the parallel means I have these multiple parallel receiver coils, um, and I utilize those for um, re reducing undersampling artifacts. Um, Grappa is one of them, there's Sense, there's Smash, there's a whole um, uh, uh, long list of different approaches. Um, but here I will just focus on Grappa because that's also one which is implemented in Gadgetron, so one you will be able to um, try later um, in one of the notebooks. Um, the idea here is now that, again, what I said before, we have this image, we have this call maps here, and now it's acquired case-based data, and nothing else is the original case-based data, and then um, convolved um, with the Fourier transform of our call maps. Now, if we zoom in to one case-based point, then the convolution um, with this with, uh, with this kernel here basically means if I take one case space point, um, then this information, this case space point, gets also um, distributed, kind of smeared onto the neighboring case space points um, because it gets convolved with this um, kernel function. Um, and now the idea of Grappa is to invert that and say, well, if these points here have information from this point, then how about I don't measure this point, which is shown here by this empty circle, and then I calculate based on this information what the information here should be. Okay. Um, and so this is the basic idea of Grappa. So it is that to say that um, I don't have to acquire a full case space, um, but here in an example of an underassembling factor of two, I leave out every second line. And then I use the points um, from which I've acquired to fill in the missing points. And I can do this because I know I've acquired it with these multiple receiver calls, and I know the effect of this receiver calls is that there is um, distribution from data from here onto this neighboring case space information. So if I take out this block here, then I take the neighboring points. This is for one coil, and I try to calculate what the missing um, point is. And I can also use the information of all the other coils. And this is then basically the formula which you get to, which basically says that for a missing case space point kx, ky, I can calculate it based on the neighboring um, points which I actually have acquired given some, some uh, weighting kernel here. Of course, the question is how do I get that um, weighting function? So I could, similar to what you have done before, calculate the causativity maps and calculate the Fourier transform of that, but that's uh, not very good. A better approach is to have so-called auto-calibration lines, which means that I have some part of my case space, usually in the center. I actually have a fully sampled region. And in this fully sampled region, I can use that information to calculate my kernel, because here I basically know the black ones and I know the red ones, so which are otherwise missing. And so I can calculate my grappa coefficients. And once I've done those, then I can use it to fill in the missing information here in the outer part of case space. So there are quite a few steps involved in Grappa. So first, uh, um, I have to determine this, um, this, um, uh, cali this um, uh, calibration lines. And based on these lines, I have to calculate my um, calibration information. So the, these weights here. Then I can fill in with this information the missing case space lines. Then I reconstruct an image. And then I, I get an image for each coil. And then I still have to combine it to one final image. Lucky enough, uh, we don't have to do any of that because that's already part of um, Gadgetron and also part of SURF, um, where you have this an object which is a Cartesian Grappa reconstructor, um, which basically just needs the pre-processed case-based data, and then you can say process and it does everything in the background. It's very useful. This is one of the notebooks um, which you can look at. Now, um, in, um, in addition to um, this, this is a kind of a direct approach, so it's not iterative. I just give it the case space once, I fill in the missing case space invasion, I do my reconstruction. We can also take it to the next step, and this is now then links to what, um, uh, what we heard at the beginning from Andrew, is iterative reconstruction. So again, we have this um, uh, kind of case space formula, and we know we can kind of write that. Um, as a, a linear equation, and then we can minimize that because we have an we have a Gaussian noise in our acquired data. We use this uh, least square approach, 
and we can solve that. And you have heard about the different approaches already before that. Um, and so in this notebook here, which is the main one for, for this week for the Amar part, you will look into what this undersampled case base look like, how has been the data acquired, what is this inner um, calibration part and so on. And then you use this grubber reconstruction in order to obtain your image. And then as the second part, you will um, have an example how you can run your own iterative reconstruction. So rather than relying on this object here, which you just call, um, you write your own iterative reconstruction. And this is then based on a conjugate gradient approach. That is what I have here. And again, um, what you have, uh, the two operations, or Chris already mentioned, you have the forward and the backward operation. So with one, you go from the image to your case space. And then the other one, you go from your case space to, to your image space. And these are all um, implemented for the MR acquisition model. So you can just simply call that. Now, um, there's a, uh, another notebook which um, uh, basically takes up on this idea here. So here you will basically write your, um, your um, conjugate gradient from scratch, um, basically using the information which is on Wikipedia um, and just um, uh, translating it into your Python code. But of course, um, if you want to use more um, advanced um, solvers, you might not want to write them all yourself, but use existing ones. And so in this notebook here, we can, um, we use the, um, a SciPy um, conjugate gradient approach. And the main thing what you will learn here is how can you link to these other external um, packages? Because unfortunately, what the main challenge here is again, um, that MRI um, deals with complex data. Most of these optimization schemes are defined um, for real value data rather than complex data. So the main objective function, or sorry, the main learning objective here is to learn how can I um, interact with these solvers, which are real value based with my complex data. Which takes a little bit of work around, but once you have done that, it's quite um, convenient. Um, and the last notebook here then is on um, creating your own undersampled case-based data. Um, this is more than if you want to go to the next step and say, well, I want to develop my own algorithms and I need testing data, um, but it's a bit the, the, the fact that surface based on um, real MR data um, it can be a little bit annoying here because it would mean that if I want to have a different undersampling pattern, for example, I need to go to the scanner and acquire exactly this pattern in order to try it. So what you, what's shown here in this notebook is how can you create these um, undersampling schemes yourself, at least for the example of a Cartesian um, case. So you'll start with a fully sampled data set and based on that, you kind of, kind of create your own acquisition model um, with different undersampling schemes, which you then can use in order to evaluate or compare uh, your own um, reconstruction algorithms. Um, this is again shown here. So you use um, a fully sampled case-based data and then you can say, well, I want a two times undersampling, uh, for example, or actually I want to have a, a low resolution image and all of this um, can be created out of this one without you having to go to the scanner and repeat your acquisition. Um, so yeah, that's the overview for this week. Um, there's also then kind of a, a challenge for this week, which is um, not in the notebooks, but um, it links quite well to um, what um, Jacob said beforehand. So you heard also from, from, from um, Jacob that there's a different um, solvers available in SIL. Um, here in these notebooks, you learn how to write your own conjugate gradient method. You will also use SciPy uh, conjugate gradient method. And the challenge would now be to try your own um, conjugate gradient least square approach using SIL. So if this um, notebook here, which I think um, you should already have tried um, last week if you did the CT notebooks, um, where you can see the kind of filtered back projection, which would be um, just um, a simple uh, direct reconstruction and how you can use this conjugate gradient least square approach. Um, if you have a look at this notebook, it's just a few lines of code of how you, de how you define that, um, but um, you should be able to then adapt it for your MR reconstruction to actually use SIL functionality rather than having to write the code yourself. So uh, please give this a try. Um, and if some of you uh, manage that, it would be also great if you could then um, show that um, if you want on a Wednesday, but otherwise in our Friday um, uh, summary meeting. Now this brings me to the end of the amount. I just want to again reiterate what Chris already um, suggested uh, before. 
this multimodality notebook. So uh, it's my slide from, from the first Monday is that we have these different modalities. And we want to highlight kind of the similarities between all of those. Um, and I showed you also this, that they all use kind of the same objects um, in order to define our reconstruction. And um, for this, um, in the last week, we suggested you have a look at this one, where you see how the acquisition model is defined for these different modalities. And we did a very simple reconstruction. Um, but now we want to take it uh, to the next step and actually do a proper iterative reconstruction. And for this, you find in the synergistic folder, the gradient descent one, where you learn how to define this objective function, the gradient of the objective function, and to do this um, optimization using gradient descent. Again, the gradient descent here is written by, um, is, is kind of self-written. Um, so use a fixed step size and everything, nothing fancy, but um, we thought it's important for you to see the different steps, um, but also feel free here then to um, take it to the next level and then use SIL functionality again. Um, and then once you have written it for one modality, you should be able to plug in all the different modalities. Um, just as a reminder, also what um, Andrew said before, right? The main things you need is the objective function. So that gives you um, an, an, a measure of how well a, a current estimate for X for your image fulfills um, the, the acquisition um, or fits to your um, acquired data. And then you need a gradient objective, which tells you in which direction do I need to change my X in order to minimize uh, the objective function or maximize if you're talking about pen. Yeah. Okay, um, so just as a summary for today, it's all about undersampled data. And you will learn, uh, we will cover different um, types of, of reconstruction. So the very classic ones, such as Grapper, um, which doesn't need any iter uh, iterative approaches. Um, where we use the basic information from the core sensitivities in order to fill in the missing data to iterative reconstructions, where we then try to minimize objective functions. Um, this is all I wanted to show. Are there any questions? All right, there was one question maybe from Maura about the calibration coefficients. Um, they are indeed invariant over the whole case space because they come from the fact so sorry, maybe repeat the question for everyone because there was a, just a message to me. The question was, are the calibration coefficients which you're using Grappa, are they the same for all the case space points? And indeed they are because they are based on the uh, fact that we multiply the image with the core sensitivity information. And uh, core sensitivity information, the multiplication image space means that I'm convolving the entire case space with the Fourier transform of the um, core sensitivity maps. And hence it's one kind of kernel function, if you want, which gets convolved with all the different points. It's the same everywhere in your case space. That's also why I can estimate it from a central region, for example, then apply it to the other, other times. Okay. 